Hello guys. Today in lesson 11, we're going to be listening to the speaking and listening portion about the human voice. Our primary focus today is to listen to the story about the human voice and its variations and answer questions about the text. Before we get started with the story though, there are a few things we can try out. First, I want you to touch your throat while you hum or talk softly. Now, as you do that, what do the vibrations feel like? Can you feel the vibrations on the inside, the outside, or both? What other objects make vibrations that we can hear? Okay, touch your throats while we make a soft sound and a loud sound. On both types of sound, how does your throat feel different when you make these two different sounds? So question, what is intensity? If you remember from yesterday, intensity is talking about the volume or the power behind the sound. So which kind of sound, soft or loud, has the most intensity? Ah, yes, the loud sound would. Now touch your throat again and make a high-pitched sound and a low-pitched sound. So how does your throat feel different when you make these two different kinds of sounds? So what is frequency? If you remember from our previous read-alouds, frequency is how often something happens during a set amount of time. So how does it affect the pitch of the sound that is made? The more frequent the sound waves happen, the higher the pitch of sound. The longer the sound frequency happens, the lower the pitch. So before we get started, I want you to predict how you think your bodies produce your voice. If you could not speak, how else would you communicate? Some people that cannot use their voice boxes to speak are called mute. Students, people that are mute have the ability to communicate with others using sign language and written words. There's also technology that helps people who cannot speak to communicate effectively. Listen carefully today to learn more about the voice and to see whether or not your predictions about how our voices are produced are correct. As we get started, let's look at some key vocabulary words. These are words that you're going to hear throughout the lesson. You're not expected to be able to use these words immediately, but with repeated exposure throughout the lessons, hopefully you'll acquire a good understanding of most of these words. You may also keep a student dictionary or domain dictionary, notebook, along with definitions, sentences, and or other writing exercises using these vocabulary words. As always, remember you can pause the video while you write things down, or you can go back and rewatch certain things if you need to. The first word is variations. Variations are changes in amount form, or level of something. Next, I see voice box. The voice box is called the larynx. And then finally, I see diaphragm. The diaphragm is the sheet of muscle that separates the lungs from the lower part of the torso and that allows air to be breathed into the lungs. So listen for those vocabulary words in today's speaking and listening. Many weeks passed before Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Ethan were able to spend some time together again. After a long, hot summer, school had reopened, and the children were also involved in after-school sports. During that time, Samuel had undergone eye surgery to remove cataracts from his eyes, and Jack now had to wear his hearing aid all of the time. The outside world had changed too. Fall had arrived. Green leaves 
had been replaced by a montage of copper, red, yellow, and brown leaves. Gone was the warm morning air, and its place was a chilly morning breeze. There were many mornings when frost lay on the ground. Everyone was looking forward to Thanksgiving as a joyful holiday to spend with family and friends. It was a Saturday morning, and Jack was sitting in Samuel's kitchen. The two men were playing their weekly game of chess. They had first played chess together when they were in third grade classmates. They had not been playing for a long when Amy and Ethan arrived and scampered eagerly into the kitchen, closely pursued by Alfie. They had come to visit their grandfather, and Amy had some exciting news to share with him. Slow down, slow down, advised Samuel. You'll go crashing into the wall if you aren't careful, he warned. As Samuel spoke, Alfie wagged his tail and promptly sat down on Ethan's feet. Hello, Granddad, said Amy cheerfully. How are you? I'm very well, replied Samuel cheerily. What have you troublemakers been up to? It's almost Thanksgiving, said Ethan excitedly. We're going to sing in a concert at school. You are, are you? said Jack. Well, I hope we're invited to hear you sing. Oh, yes, you are, chimed in Amy. We brought you tickets, see? Amy held up two tickets. It's next Wednesday, and you have front row seats. The third, fourth, and fifth grade classes are going to sing traditional songs from around the world. My class is singing an Irish lullaby, Amy explained. My class is going to sing a French song called Frère Jacques, said Ethan. Before, what does this look like? Pause the video to answer your question. If you said an x-ray, you'd be right. So what kind of light is used in an x-ray? Ah, invisible light is actually used in an x-ray. Sounds very entertaining, said Jack, as he contemplated his next move on the chessboard. You know, each human voice is quite unique. Each voice has its own tone. That's the reason why you can recognize a person by his or her voice, explained Jack. Question. What does contemplated mean? Pause the video to answer the question. Contemplated means thought. Okay. Our voices are as unique as we are, Samuel agreed. Only I have my voice. Precisely, agreed Jack. However, although human voices differ from one another, they are all produced in the same way. They are? asked Ethan. Indeed they are, Jack continued, having finally decided to move one of his bishops. If you could see inside your body, you would discover that inside your throat, at the top of your windpipe or trachea, is your voice box. The voice box is also known as the larynx. Within your larynx are two bands of muscles called vocal cords. These vocal cords enable humans to make a wide range of sounds. If you look in this image, can you find the trachea? Now, you just learned about the voice box, which can be found at the top of the trachea or windpipe. If the voice box was added to this image, where would the artist put it? Not real close to your mouth at the top of the trachea or the windpipe. So what is another name for a voice box? Another name for the voice box is a larynx. Neat, said Ethan, but how is the sound made? It's not as complicated as you might think, explained Jack. When you breathe in, your vocal cords relax so that air can reach your lungs. When you breathe out, 
a muscle called the diaphragm moves upward to force air out of your body. When you speak, air leaves your body too. Your lungs and diaphragm force air through the openings in your throat, past the vocal cords. This movement of air causes the vocal cords to vibrate, and so sound is produced. As your vocal cords tighten and relax, different sounds are produced. So looking at the image, who can point to the lungs in this picture? What important muscle for breathing is not shown in this image? Pause the video to answer that question. The important muscle that's not shown in this image is the diaphragm. If the artist were to add the diaphragm, where would it go? Can you point to where your diaphragm is? I remember it's right below your lungs. Check, announced Samuel. What, yelled Jack. Don't tell me you're going to beat me again. Samuel Van Lumen. Jack stared furiously at the chessboard and tried, tried to find a way out of his predicament. Question. Does the word furiously seem like a good word to use here? Pause the video to answer. Okay. Why? Can you figure out what the word predicament means from the context? Ah, so predicament is like in a hard spot. Come on, Alfie, said Jack. Let's go play ball. To the children, he said, I wasn't finished telling you about the power of the human voice. I'm coming too, Amy announced. And with that, the two children and Alfie ran out into Samuel's backyard. The children played with Alfie for quite a while. Then they stayed for lunch with Samuel and Jack. Finally, it was time for them to go home. See you on Wednesday at the concert, said Ethan. You will indeed, said Samuel. I'll continue my lesson then, threatened Jack. Before they knew it, Wednesday had arrived. It was a cool day and rain had been forecast. Samuel and Jack arrived early and took their seats in the front of the school auditorium. Thirty minutes later, the auditorium was full and parents waited anxiously to see their children perform. Let's pause for just a moment. Listen to the word auditorium. What prefix do you hear that has to do with sound? The prefix odd, A-U-D. Based on the prefix, what do you think an auditorium is? Pause the video to answer that question. Ah, an auditorium is a large place to go to hear music or speeches. Samuel's daughter, Anna, and her husband, John, had also arrived and were eager to hear Amy and Ethan sing. First up was Ethan's class singing Frère Jacques, a traditional French song. Behind them was a large screen with an image of the Eiffel Tower displayed on it. The children sang the song perfectly. Samuel and Jack smiled proudly. I can hear Ethan's voice distinctly, said Jack. Ah, the Eiffel Tower on this image is located on the left behind that group of students. The Eiffel Tower is a real structure in Paris, France. Its designer also helped design the steel framework for the Statue of Liberty in New York City, which was a gift from France to the United States. Why do you think Jack said he heard Ethan's voice distinctly? Pause the video to answer that question. Now, you may have a different answer than I do, but you should include something that each person's voice is unique. You could also include that Jack was probably wearing his hearing aid so he could hear more clearly. Then it was Amy's class's turn. They sang an Irish lullaby beautifully. 
Samuel nodded at Jack and said, I can hear Amy's voice too, nice and strong. When the concert was over, the family walked together to the local cafe for hot chocolate. They took their seats, and minutes later, they were all sipping mugs of hot chocolate piled high with marshmallows. As they talked about the show, Jack complimented the children on their singing. My teacher says I have perfect pitch, said Amy proudly. What's that? Ethan asked, looking puzzled. Amy was happy to explain. When my chorus teacher is ready for my class to sing, she likes us to start on the note of middle C instead of her playing it on the piano. I just sing it. Wow, said Jack. Did I tell you that the pitch of your voice is determined by the size of your larynx and vocal cords? No, you didn't, chimed in Ethan with Marshmallow on his top lip. That's why a young child's voice is generally higher in pitch than an adult's, explained Jack. The larger your larynx and vocal cords, the louder and lower your voice is. The pitch of your voice is also determined by the tension of the surrounding muscles. Trained singers learn how to control these muscles to produce variations in pitch and intensity. Question. Why would singers want to produce variations in pitch and intensity in their voices? Pause the video to answer that question. Oh, so that's what it means to train your voice, said Amy. And I bet men usually have longer vocal cords than women, and that's why their voices are deeper. You've got it, said Jack. You and Granddad are so smart, said Ethan. I'm much smarter than he is, joked Jack. Well, laughed Samuel, action speaks louder than words. Jack's eyebrows raised as Samuel made the motions of struggling with a fishing pole. You are both very clever, Amy laughed. I'm so glad we have been able to spend so much time with both of you. Me too, shouted Ethan. The next day was Thanksgiving. Samuel, Jack, and an array or group of family members and friends gathered in Samuel's home for dinner. They ate, laughed, and enjoyed each other's company. They gave thanks for each other and the bonds that Samuel and Jack had nurtured for so many years. Question, what does nurtured mean? Pause the video to answer the question. Nurtured kind of means taken care of. Now, you can pause the video to answer some questions from your own teacher. As always, remember you can watch the video again or rewind and watch certain parts. If you liked what you heard today, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button at the bottom. And if you learned something new today, hopefully you can pass it along to somebody else. Thank you.